I'm back at the table saw. What I want to do is this box is going to get splines, right? And so what I want to do right now, why I have this set up to be at 45 degrees from cutting the miters, is I want to go ahead and cut this piece at a 45 degree angle so I can make a sled that I can use to hold the box as I run it through and create the curves um, for those splines to go into. I decided that I was going to try a different approach to doing this and that's actually to cut it by hand using a razor. It is a fairly simple design. Um, the saw was problematic and I, I need to work on my technique on that. So I went out and I bought a new X-Acto knife and um, I'm going to go ahead and try this technique. I watched a couple videos online and uh, I'm going to give it a shot. I think it will work uh, pretty well for us. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tracing paper Place that down there and go ahead and trace this design. I'm going to also use a straight edge okay not too bad there it is, drawn out, and I will go ahead and then cut this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off this transparency and set it aside. And now I have the design drawn onto my background, which is this figured um, cherry. So, and I'm just taping and reinforcing on the back. I'll go ahead and tape up some of these areas that um, need a little more support in the back so the fibers don't blow through. These areas are reinforced on the back. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going and I'm gonna cut this out. Uh, I'm going to come around this curve part. The contrasting wood underneath. Just like that. Now what I'm going to do is on the back side of this piece, I'm going to veneer the heck out of it because it is a, a very wavy wood and the grain's a little crazy and I don't want it to pop out. From chipping out. So I'm going to go wash my hands because they're sticking to each other. Um, but then I'll flip this over and we'll go ahead and we'll cut the piece to fit in there. And I'm going to position that towards the end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some masking tape. And I'm going to mask and tape both of these down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue cutting down through the top one, right? Using the top one as a guide. And I'm going to go ahead and score. And I'm going to make a lot of light, light passes. Beveling slightly.
will help hide the edge and cutting around this thing. So I'll keep cutting until this completely frees and then we'll catch up there. I've gone around everything pretty good on all sides. So I can now reveal or take off this masking tape, remove the background, which is the cherry. Right. Set that aside. Very careful with it. And now I can see on this, I know it's hard to tell on the, um, on the video, but I can see my knife marks. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to cut on those marks until I free this piece. Keep going. Okay, I placed it in. If you hear, taped it on the back. Let's flip it over and see. Well, it's not bad. Is it good? Mm. I don't know. Um, there are definitely gaps I can see. Uh, there's a gap here and a gap there. All in all, not too bad though. I. I think once I glue it, and maybe I can even fill a little, a little bit of the pores with some, you know, glue and some sandpaper or something, and uh, and use some of the veneer. Um, I don't think it'll be that bad. Okay, as I went to go peel this off, um, I started to kind of break apart the veneer. And so I really want to go ahead and just, I think, leave that alone. Um, I could pull it out. I'm going to leave well enough alone and move on. So I'm going to go ahead next and uh, let the veneer tape on the back dry. And uh, then I'll cut out the two silos, which are these, these things here. And then I'll go ahead and cut out the, um, the moon. Now I'm going to start on these silos which I'm not really happy with. They're kind of different sizes. So I'm gonna to try to mimic this one over here. So. Flip it over and check the back too, which will give me an idea of where I still need to cut more because I can see it come through or not. Okay, there's one. I'm going to go ahead and Just grab a, the scrap from the center of the, the thing. Okay, so I'll go ahead and cut this out. Being careful to be more accurate. There it is. I will 
mask and tape this off. Okay. Push that in. And voila. Still some issues. Not too, too bad though. I'll go ahead and cut the second one. And uh, it's the same as this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then you'll catch back up uh, when I cut this out. I'll cut that out and then go ahead and use it to help figure out where the grain should go. Now I got that all cut out. I will take the piece I'm going to use for the gray in the logo. And I want it to be right. Yep. Right there looks good. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and tape this down and go ahead and cut it out. Now this is a different species of wood to contrast the color, but it's no different than how I've done everything else so far. So I'm going to go ahead, flip it over. I'm going to apply some tape to the back of it, uh, veneer tape especially in these corner areas, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. The one video I saw said just lightly tap it. Help spread the wood fibers and uh, make it fit nicer. Now, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to fill these in on this side. This is actually the back side. So I'll go ahead and fill these in before I glue it down to the substrate. Okay, so what I'm going to do is make some sawdust with the type of wood. Right? See? Took the sawdust and a little bit of glue and I made this kind of glue paste stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and find any gaps and work it in. And then rub it smooth. Okay. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and do the maroon. And uh, then we'll get ready to um, glue this up. There we have it, the Monaco logo. I'll go ahead and glue it to the substrate. It needs a veneer for the back to stabilize the board. Uh, I'll go ahead and then between some scraps of ply, I'll go ahead and glue it up. So I cut a veneer sheet to for the back, um, that'll be on the back side to stabilize the thing. We have our front sheet. So I'll add some glue. Okay. on there nicely. Okay, so that's on there. Okay. Now I will put this on. Slide it to the edge. And I'm going to go ahead and put some tape on it. Okay. 
Okay, a whole lot of clamps. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll let this sit here on the bench overnight. I'm going to go in, relax for a little bit, go to bed, and uh, come out and uh, start again tomorrow. Good morning. Everything here has been glowing up overnight. So what I'm going to do is we're going to unclamp it and unveil it. And uh, hopefully it, it looks good. So let's, let's go ahead and unclamp it. It might have worked. I'll be damned. Well, I, I guess we can't really tell until we get the tape off. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these clamps away, and then we'll go ahead and remove the veneer tape. In the video, I saw a couple ways. Siles Cloth used um, a card scraper and sandpaper to get it off. Um, I saw in the video they just re wet it and it peeled right up. So I'm going to try that before I go to the card scraper. I'm gonna go wet this a little more. There we go. Maybe a combo of the two? Feel as much of it off as possible using the card scraper to kind of help it come up. And then just grabbing and pulling, re wetting it if I need to. Trying to be careful and not pull up. veneer okay and I'll just go ahead and pull up as much of this tape as possible I have to say I'm pretty pleased the the gap filling I did from the back seemed to work um, I can still see a little here because it was real thick there but everything else it's real hard to to notice uh, it might be a little more noticeable once it finishes on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, take a sanding block. And I'm just going to sand. But I want to go through, sand everything, and then I'm going to switch to a finer grit, do another light sanding, and then. Uh, do the back side. The back side shouldn't be too hard. I just have these strips basically to do. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going. I sanded it. I uh, got everything done. Now I'll just flip it over and I'm going to wet. The tape here. Reactivate that glue. Okay, so I wet them. This is kind of easy because all the tape goes with the with the grain, um, and there's only these stripes here. 
So I'll keep going. And I'll take all this tape off. And uh, we'll go ahead and I'll sand this side. It's really no different. It's simpler than the other side. Uh, and I'll go ahead and finish that up. Okay, I can see why now wedding might not be the best option, or at least wetting as much as I wet this back. The veneer is starting to buckle because it's sucking up the moisture. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to take a little mineral spirits here just to see if I missed any glue on this top side or anything. We look pretty good, and that's, I'm, I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with that. That looks pretty nice. For my first attempt at this, I'm okay. There, there are things that could use improvement. Um, but it has me optimistic to try other things. I'd like to try some floral patterns and stuff like that. Um, might be a nice thing to add to some boxes for my niece. You can do some flowers, make a jewelry box atop. Um, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to let that dry and then we'll go ahead and assemble the box. Um, the back side doesn't really matter all that much. I sanded it, but it's going to get a piece of foam on the top to protect the mic. Um, I just wanted to put wood to stabilize it, clean it in case they ever decide to take that, that foam away. There will be some wood that is somewhat attractive underneath. Um, but it's mainly going to be covered, that's why there's no fancy logo or anything there, because it'll be the bottom and it'll be covered with a, a foam thing to protect the mic.